care to elderly and disabled? And then Congressman Thaddeus McCotter first bringing up the prospect of elderly euthanasia. Euthanasia. Euthanasia, thank you. <laughs> euthanasia, last month. What? This Republican from Michigan? Well, he joins us now to explain. Elderly euthanasia, is that what's going to happen if this health care reform bill passes? Come on, I read that provision and the, the, the supporters are saying that it's telling people to have a health directive, a uh, living will, which I have all of that so my family doesn't have to make those tough decisions. Which one is it? Euthanasia or a living will? The problem is to read it without looking at it in the context of a government rationing bill, which this is inherently a government rationing bill. It's trying to reduce the supply of health care to reduce the cost at a time demographic pushes will drive up demand. When they try to ration that cost, over a period of time what you're going to see, because the principle in this bill will be your quality and continuance of life is dependent upon its cost to the government. That does not belong in that bill. They should take this provision out and do it separately. It should be about the compassionate care and the choices of the individual absent a consideration of the cost to the government. Congressman, I'm sorry, Senator. Let me just jump in here real quick. I, I downloaded that bill. By the way, it almost crashed my computer. So I'm reading through this. I find it very, very much legal speak. So I don't know how you guys picked this stuff out. But talk <laughs> about rationing right now. If you add a minimum, a minimum of 47 million more to the payroll, uh, to the health care um, covered, you know, not to mention all the aliens that will flood the borders. Minimum, we, whatever rationing we have going on right now, that will multiply, right? And to be clear, one of the problems that we have is rather than increasing the supply and letting the market forces take effect, empowering patients to serve as consumers of health care, what you're seeing is the government going to decide what services are beneficial or necessary to provide and trying to get people into a government system. When you do that, you're addressing the cost issue by reducing the supply. When you do that, there's no sane person in the political center of the America who thinks that if the government starts constricting supply at the time of the demographic demand curve rising, that it's going to be any better than the trillion dollar obligations of Medicare or Medicaid, let alone fix it by adding a third failed government program. And Congressman, as Eric was just saying, this is a thousand pages. And I think what's the scariest thing here is this particular reform that we're talking about, uh, this provision that we're talking about, it's page 873, 875. What's scary here is how many more of these are in this thousand page proposal that we're going to figure out later on. This is just one of them. Senator, I think you've hit the nail on the head. It is not simply the president saying that the health care system is broken when clearly there may be problems, but it is not broken. People tend to like the coverage that they have. They like the system as it works. They think it's good or excellent, but they do worry about costs in a recession. The scariest thing in this health care debate is the bill. Read the bill. Don't listen to me. Don't listen to. Go read the bill. See how it affects. But bring a lawyer when you read yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, part of the reason. Well, as a it's, lawyer, I think that sounded. Yeah. Right. Part of the reason it's so scary reading this is because you have people like Billy Talzin, your former Republican colleague, there on the Hill, who's now the biggest lobbyist out there writing this insurance bill. I mean, he's give. He's they're negotiating. He's like, okay, I'll give you 80 billion. You give me this. So, are you going to go along with that? and you're not going to negotiate prices for Medicare to try to get senior citizens a better deal? Well, let me give Billy his due. He was also a former Democrat. He's very good at that. <laughs> <laughs> he knows both sides. That was a deal that was cut by the executive branch of the government with Big Pharma, with Pharma, the big pharmaceuticals, and others. And now you're going to see them spend $150 million in conjunction with other special interests to try to convince the American people that this is good for them. One, it won't work. They'll read the bill and figure out what matters to them. But I want you to think of the breathtaking hypocrisy of the executive branch telling us this was not going to be lobby riddled administration, it was going to be open and transparent, and they're cutting a deal that even people like Robert Reich have said caused him to be very concerned about the future democracy in the United States. Very, Robert Reich supports the bill. Very important, you, you point out to our viewers who may not know, Ezekiel Emanuel, you want to tell everyone who he is? Now he's, he's the, the number one advisor to the president on health care. Who is he? He's uh, the chief of staff's brother. He's a, yeah, he's a very prominent bioethicist. He's also part of a panel that was set up under the stimulus bill to the tune of $1.1 billion in new administrative overhead to determine what type of health care the United States needs. There you go. So will you, though, you didn't answer my question, will you negotiate better prices for senior citizens under Medicare? 
Well, I don't think that the government should negotiate because well, there's it's no... Well, it's a government it's program. A, it's inequitable for the government. The government, as we did in Medicare Part D, was allowed for competition, allowed for seniors to make their own decisions, and the costs have been radically lower than people thought. When people talk about the government negotiating prices for health care, what you're going to see is one of two things. A sweetheart deal between the pharmaceutical companies that makes the government happy and not necessarily but seniors, are, are or they're going to dictate what that is. The insurance companies in, in the uh, employers negotiate, this is what we're going to pay, and negotiate with doctors, the insurance companies, Companies. This is how much we're going to right. pay you for these services. Everybody negotiates. I don't. The government has an inequitable power relationship with anyone. It is the most powerful monopoly on the face so of the planet is the United States government. I want free market forces to determine that with empowered consumers. Those are the people who should be bargaining and negotiating, not a bureaucrat that's unelected on a